handbag history, the bags that defined the decades. Welcome to Luxify, we talk about fashion, luxury and basically all the best things life has to offer. Welcome to our video about handbag history, the bags that defined the decades. Above any other fashion accessory, the handbag is a sign of the times. Each decade is marked by historic fashion trends and styles, and the handbag manages to encapsulate the spirit of an era like no other fashion creation. In this day and age, many of the bags we wear were originally designed many years ago. They have either become classics or have a fashionable retro style. We recently have seen many relaunches of archival designs, like the Gucci Diana and the Dior Saddle, so I thought you might be interested in handbag history. Here I'll show you the most iconic bags of the decades, starting from 1950s until now, the 2020s. At the end of the video we have a bonus fact that may surprise you. So without further ado, here are the bags that define the decades. If you are new here, welcome, please subscribe and follow us on Instagram, at Luxficom. 1950s, Chanel 255 In the 1950s, the post-war economic boom sparked a revolution in fashion, spearheaded by Dior's new look. Waists were being nipped, full skirts grazed the ankles, and women required a smaller, structured handbag to balance the new silhouette. It was also a custom to match your handbag to your shoes and hat, so women had multiple bags in multiple colors in their closets. In the 1950s, Gucci Gucci started using bamboo handles on his bags, something that is iconic of the house until this day. It was also during this decade that Jackie Kennedy started being linked with a large unstructured Gucci bag, now called the Jackie Bag. The 1950s also saw the iconic moment when the Hermes Sac de Patches became the Kelly bag, when the Princess of Monaco, Grace Kelly, used the bag to cover her pregnant belly. Hermes officially changed the name of the bag only in 1977. But the most iconic bag of the decade, the one that changed fashion the most, was the Chanel 255. Designed by Coco Chanel in February of 1955, this was the first bag to offer a chain strap, which brought a new freedom to women that now had their hands free. This bag is, to this date, one of the most classic, iconic handbags ever. It's that kind of bag that will never go out of style. 1960s, Louis Vuitton Speedy. The 1960s marked a period of increasing freedom in fashion for women, which led to younger generations not wearing handbags at all. The handbag was no longer a necessity, but it was a great way to make a statement. Inspired by that, Paco Rabanne launched a collection of now iconic chain mail purses, destined to be swung on the dance floor. It was during the 1960s that Bottega Veneta created the iconic Intrechato Wave. In the late 60s, it began cutting the leather into strips and waving them together, making it much more durable. But the most important bag of the decade was the Louis Vuitton Speedy. The Speedy was originally launched in 1932 as a travel bag. It was a phone call from Audrey Hepburn in the 1960s that gave this bag the iconic form and size we know today. Audrey requested Louis Vuitton to custom make her a mini Speedy, so it would be more befitting for everyday use. Who knew that a simple phone call could give us this amazing bag that is, to this date, a classic? 1970s, Whiting and Davis Mesh Bag In theme with the hippie culture, the bags had a bohemian style. Many were crafted from supple leather or suede, and designed to be swung across the body via a long slender strap. In 1971, Mulberry opened its doors, offering soft suede bags embellished with embroidery and fringing from its Somerset workshop. It was also during the 70s that Karl Lagerfeld cultivated Cloès's signature bohemian look. The 1970s were also important for Loewe, that launched the now classic Amazona bag. Towards the end of the 1970s, with the opening of Studio 54, fashion became more disco, and the most iconic bag of this time is the Whiting & Davis Mesh Bag. You can still find their mesh bags in their website or vintage. This whole Studio 54 style will be very much in fashion the next few seasons. 1980s Birkin Bag and Prada Backpack the 80s were marked by a maximalist style and uncontrolled consumerism. 
the bags were filled with monograms, shiny hardware and unmissable branding. It was during the 1980s that Karl Lagerfeld made one notable addition to the 255 bag, the iconic interlocking CC locks. This is today the most iconic and classic Chanel handbag, and is a direct interpretation of the 80s logo mania. It was also in the 1980s that the Birkin was created. Designed by Jean-Louis Dumas and Jane Birkin during a flight, the bag was supposed to be a practical and supple travel companion, and now it is the most famous bag in the world. And the first Prada bag designed by Miucha Prada was revolutionary of that time. In 1984, Prada forayed into a more modern aesthetic and released a bag made of coconut island, a material used for military tents. It was durable, waterproof and beautiful. It was a massive hit. Prada became known for a cool, refined elegance, in direct contrast to the glitter-laden, sex-heavy 80s. If you are enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to my channel so I can continue to bring you the best content about fashion and luxury living. 1990s – Lady Dior and Fendi Baguette The 1990s were perhaps the most iconic decade when it comes to handbags. In 1995, Bernadette Chirac, former First Lady of France, contacted Christian Dior, explaining that she wished to give the Princess of Wales a unique handbag upon her visit to Paris. The Amazon created a beautiful structured black bag, unofficially named the Chow Chow. It was presented to Lady Diana at the Southern Exhibition at the Grand Palais, and shortly after, the princess was photographed several times with the bag on her arm. Described as iconic and legendary, Dior launched the bag in a larger series and changed the name to Lady Dior in 1996 with Princess Diana's blessing. Over the decades, the Lady Dior bag has been established as an enduring icon of the house. Launched in 1997, a time where many were still touring Prada's practical backpack, the Fendi Baguette offered a different, totally new silhouette. Designed by Silvia Venturini Fendi, she christened the bag the Baguette, because this shoulder bag was made to sit comfortably under the arm in the very same way that the French are usually seen carrying their baguettes. This bag is a pop culture symbol. In part, due to its appearance in Sex and the City, this was the first it bag ever. The baguette was exclusive, fanciful, and largely aspirational. It was a bag women dreamed about, and it was so popular there were huge waiting lists. Since 1997, over 1,000 different iterations of the Fendi baguette have been created, a testament to the staying power of this revolutionary silhouette. 2000s – Dior Saddle Bag by 2000, the EAT bag reigned supreme, and it was common practice for the most anticipated bag launches to have a lengthy waiting list. Some EAT bags of the decade were Cloas Paddington, Alexander Wang's Rocco, Louis Vuitton's collaborations with Takashi Murakami, and Balenciaga's motorcycle bag, that has recently been growing in popularity once more. But the most iconic bag of the decade was the Dior Saddle bag. The saddle bag was first created in 1999, at the peak of John Galliano's Dior tenure. Its initial appearance told the line between what was considered high fashion and, for lack of a better word, ugly. Intended to be worn short-strapped and tied against the arm like a saddle, the accessory became an instant trend, sported by everyone from Beyoncé to Carrie Bradshaw. The saddle is a statement of the 2000s, and when Maria Grazia Curie relaunched this bag in 2019, it was a huge success once more. 2010s – Celine Luggage It bags were still a thing in the 2010s, and the one that is most representative of this decade is for sure the Celine Luggage. One of the most popular bags of all time and the most famous Celine bag, the luggage is an icon. Designed by the queen of minimalism herself, it was Phoebe Philo's first it bag, released in the spring 2010 collection. With its distinctive front face adorned with a zipper and availability in multiple colors and materials, it is not hard to see why the Sydney luggage, even after a decade of its launch, still appeals to fashion connoisseurs of all ages and tastes. But it wasn't the only it bag of the decade. 
Other popular styles were the Givenchy Antigona launched in 2011, the Chanel Boy Bag, which Karl Lagerfeld named after Gabrielle Chanel's first love boy couple, the Chloé Faye Bag, and the Gucci Dionysus, unveiled at Alessandra Michel's inaugural Autumn Winter 2015 collection. 2020s it might be too soon to elect the most iconic bag of the decade, with not even two years into this one. But so far, the bag that made the bigger splash in the fashion scene was the Bottega Veneta pouch. One of the first products Lee made when he arrived at Bottega, the pouch was a phenomenon, an it bag when it bags were no longer supposed to exist. Inspired by a Bottega Veneta bag carried by Lauren Hutton in American Gigolo, the pouch is a squishy, oversized clutch that is crafted of butter soft leather. With no strap and a dumpling-like shape, Bottega Veneta's merchandising team was so concerned the pouch would not sell that it ordered a very limited amount for stores at first. However, what the pouch lacked in functionality, it made up for in aesthetics. This bag started an internet craze. You could not go on Instagram without seeing this bag. Today, the pouch is available in a variety of colors and materials. With more than 8 years remaining on this decade, I'm excited to see which bags will come our way, and which bag will surpass the pouch as the bag of the decade. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Comment below which brands you would like to know more about. And for sticking with us this far, here is some bonus information. The Birkin bag has been a better investment than stocks or gold over the previous 35 years. According to Times Magazine, the Birkin bag outpaced both the S&P 500 and the price of gold in the last 35 years. They said the annual return on a Birkin was 14.2%, compared to the S&P average of 8.7% a year and gold's 1.5%. It is certainly a more fun investment. Thank you for spending some time with us and make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. In return, I'll provide you with the best content about fashion, travel and luxury living. See you soon!